In this video we are looking at the evolution of the airplane. Powered flight first took to the skies in 1903. Of course, technology and aircraft design have evolved significantly since then. Early changes saw the advancement of flight techniques and methods. These were then improved to meet changing trends and demands, with a focus on profitability and efficiency. This is likely to continue in the future, but with a greener slant. Before we get started make sure to like the video, subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon. Before Powered Flight We often think of the beginning of the aeroplane as the first, sustained and powered, flight, and the Wright brothers are credited with being the first, to accomplish this in 1903. However, there had long been interest in an experimentation with flight. The earliest known real experiments date back to the 9th century when the Andalusian inventor Abbas ibn Fernaz created a simple glider. He flew faster than the phoenix in his flight when he dressed his body in vulture feathers, according to contemporaneous writings. In the 16th century, there was more in-depth experimentation. Leonardo da Vinci studied bird flight and created several flying machines based on his findings. His work can still be found in the Codex on the Flight of Birds. These are fascinating works, but no successful flying machine has been built from them as far as we know. Powered Propeller Aircraft Leading up to the Wright brothers George Cayley, an English engineer, was a pivotal figure in the early development of the aeroplane. He created several models, including successful gliders. However, his work was hampered by a lack of engine power and lightweight components. Nonetheless, his design shared many similarities with later powered aircraft, such as the main wing and tail stabilizers. Cayley's detailed studies were followed by several attempts to put them into practice. Jean-Marie Labrise, a French aviator, flew with a horse-drawn glider. In 1886, another French aviator, Clement Adder, built the Il, a steam-powered aeroplane. This was partially successful, with a 50-meter flight off the ground. The Wright brothers' first flights in 1903. The first attempt, in 1903, was straightforward. The plane only flew 37 meters and was airborne for 12 seconds. The Wright brothers persevered, and by 1905, their third aircraft, the Wright Flyer III, was capable of longer, more controlled flight. In 1905, the longest test flight lasted 39 minutes and covered over 38 kilometers with larger fuel tanks and engine coolant added to enable longer operation. Following these successful flights, the brothers dismantled the plane to prevent competitors from replicating it. It didn't fly again until 1908, when the brothers secured contracts in America and France. This time it was converted to carry a passenger. And in May 1908, mechanic Charles Fernaz became the first airplane passenger in history. Around the same time, other aviators were working on similar designs. The most important came from the French inventor Louis Bleriot. The Bleriot 8 aeroplane, which flew in 1908, was the first to use a single stick to control both roll and pitch, as well as a foot-operated rudder pedal. Of course, the same concept has persisted with aircraft to this day. Hugo Junkers, a German engineer, made one of the most significant advances in aircraft technology. His Junkers J-1 aircraft, which first flew in 1915, was the first with an all-metal airframe. This was crucial in the development of larger passenger aircraft later on. Developing commercial possibilities In addition to military development, companies began considering revenue-generating passenger flights. In 1914, the first passenger service began. The St. Petersburg-Tampa airboat line began service between St. Petersburg and Tampa across Tampa Bay in Florida in January of that year. This 20-minute flight was a significant milestone, establishing commercial aviation. In 1919, British aviators John Alcock and Arthur Witten Brown flew the first transatlantic flight in a modified Vickers military plane. There was also a lot of experimentation and development with aircraft types during this time period. The German-built Dornier Du X, for example, was the largest aircraft at the time. It has a capacity of 169 passengers, but usually only 66, or less if converted for overnight sleeping accommodation. This 12-engine plane had a range of up to 1,700 kilometers and a lot of potential. 
however, only three were built due to the Great Depression of the 1930s. Commercial success with the Douglas DC-3 The Douglas DC-3, which debuted in 1936, was the first aircraft to accomplish this feat. With a capacity of only 32 passengers, it was small, in comparison to modern aircraft or even some predecessors, or 14 if equipped with beds. The DC-3 improved in terms of range, speed, and dependability. It provided transcontinental US service with three stops. According to Smithsonian analysis, it was the first profitable passenger aircraft, capable of operating passenger services without the need for cargo or mail subsidies. The start of the jet age, 1952. The next major advance in airplane design was with the introduction of the jet engine. Development work on jet engines began in the 1930s, and the first operational jet aircraft was the German Heinkel He 178 in 1939, and then the Messerschmitt Me 262, which saw military service in Germany from 1947. And in Britain, Boeing introduced the jet powered B 47 for military use in 1947. The first passenger jet aircraft, though, was the de Havilland Comet, entering service in 1952. The Boeing 707. Boeing expanded on its prior military success with the 707. It was designed to be a military tanker aircraft and used the same Pratt and Whitney turbojet engines as the B 52 Stratofortress. Adapting to the market, the 737 and the A320. There have been fewer fundamental changes to airplane design since the 1950s. Jet engines have remained but improved in power and efficiency, and cabin and cockpit technology has also improved while remaining based on the same designs and concepts. Boeing's evolution to the 737 series exemplifies this. Following the success of the 707 and 727, it created a new aircraft to outperform the competition and gain customers. The Boeing 737 has been the most sold aircraft to date, with 10,580 aircraft delivered. Making aircraft larger, the Boeing 747. The motivation for this came from Pan American World Airways. It asked Boeing to design an aircraft around 2.5 times the size of the Boeing 707, and development began once Panam committed to an order for 25 aircraft in April 1966. The 747 was significant not just from a technical point of view, but also from an economic one. It allowed airlines to offer lower fares and longer routes. The extra available space gave airlines new options for onboard facilities and cabins. Airbus A380 Aircraft size limits would not be pushed so far again until the development of the Airbus A380. Airbus looked at various versions of a large aircraft, including an interesting design of combining two large fuselages side by side, based on the A340. This eventually led to the concept of a two-deck aircraft. The A380 was formally announced at the Farnborough Air Show in 1990, with a target of 15% lower operating cost than the 747. Supersonic Aircraft for many aviation enthusiasts, the peak of jet age possibilities was reached with supersonic flight. The sound barrier was first broken in 1947 by the American experimental aircraft, the Bell X-1. This was powered by a rocket-based engine using liquid oxygen and ethyl alcohol. Concorde is the most well-known supersonic aircraft. It was a joint development aircraft between the UK and France and was launched in 1976. Only 20 aircraft were built, and only British Airways and Air France ever operated them. The 777X and further improvements in efficiency. For the time being, the near future of aeroplanes lies in improved technology and efficiency. The Boeing 777X, one of the most anticipated new aircraft, is set to enter service in 2021. Boeing is not alone in pushing for increased efficiency in new aircraft. With 53% composite construction, adaptive wings that move in flight to reduce drag, and advanced aerodynamic improvements to the wing shape, the A350 is also a highly fuel-efficient aircraft. This was the evolution of the airplane. We hope you like the video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for more videos about the evolution of things. Thank you for watching.